I've been an employer for many years, and one of the things I've learned is how to have a resume stand out for an IT type of position. So I want to share that information with you so your resume will also stand out when you go for some sort of computer technologist type of position, whether it's for IT or any type of infrastructure or computing job. I'm going to use Word as an example since most everyone has that or has a way to get access to it. And I want to go to the template section. So I'm going to File. I'm going to choose New. And I don't see any issue with using a template because it does get you started when you're staring at a blank page. So I'm going to hit resume and you see lots of different types of resumes here. One of the things that's really catching on with a lot of buzz is the resumes where you add your pictures, such as the one you see here, lots of different resumes with pictures in them and certain jobs that makes a lot of sense to do that. But in an IT position, I don't believe that that's going to help you. It's also going to probably make your resume so much longer and so much more difficult to keep to that magical one page that most potential employers are looking for. So I'm going to go with the modern chronological resume. There's actually lots of other good resumes that are here, but this is one that I believe has a lot of punch to it. And I really like this one as it has a little bit of color to it, but it mostly just sticks to the information. It starts out with experience followed by education, skills, and then activities. And I'm going to be modifying this a bit to make it better for an IT resume. So I'm not going to just stick with exactly what we see here. So let's start out by putting in a first name and last name in our fictitious resume. I've put in a name and an address and a phone number. And now you definitely want to have an email, no doubt about that. I also think a LinkedIn profile is a really good way to go. And that's because it typically has just professional information in it. I don't necessarily agree that you should put in Twitter, blog, or portfolio information unless it's all professional. So if you have information on your social media that is less than professional, that has personal information in it that you would not necessarily want to have out there on a resume, I think that you should just ignore that altogether. Now, if you have a type of blog that is just industry related, then it's certainly not a bad idea to add that in. Now we want to add in a short career objective. Sometimes the career objectives just get too long and it's just not necessary. So state basically what type of job that you would like and maybe a little bit of inspiration to go along with it. I went ahead and put in to achieve the goal of being an IT administrator and professional organization where I can utilize my skills in network administration and be an invaluable team player for my employer and teammates. So what this statement says is basically I've got skills and I can not only utilize them in your organization, but I'm also going to be a team player. I'm not going to be a problem. I'm going to help be a solution. It doesn't have a lot of information in there, but the information that's there is very powerful and impactive. Now we're going to get into job experience and you don't need to put a ton of different jobs in there. Just put in the jobs that are most recent. You don't have to go all the way back to when you were 15 years old and had a paper out, for instance. Just try to stick to the ones that were in your industry or maybe just one step behind it. Make sure you list your most recent job experience first. I've put in a couple of jobs. I put in my position. I put in the name of the company and the dates and it's covering from 2013 all the way to 2020. Now, don't worry if you don't have that much experience, I'm gonna help you with that as well. Now let's take a look at the responsibilities. So in each of these different jobs, I put in a single sentence just to state what I did in my job. So as the administrator for 100 staff, I did a Windows network, ran updates, and did various different things like troubleshooting. And under Help Desk, I did the same thing, just a one sentence on exactly what I did. Now comes the next part, which is the talking points, because you're going to want to say how you made things better at each job. So I added a couple of things in each of my experiences. The first one was I increased proficiency in the network to 99 point, et cetera, uptime. And then I reduced loss of business operations to new accounting software. So these are the kinds of things as an employer, I would want to talk to you about in 
our interview. And during that interview, I'm going to say, oh, that's really interesting on how you increased your proficiency. Let's talk about that. How did you do that? What was that like? What kind of uh, obstacles did you run into? How did you resolve them? So uh, we do the same thing with Help Desk. Increased call time resolution from two hours to 30 minutes. Uh, had closed more tickets. Had highest satisfaction. You know, those kinds of things. And turn these things into bullet points as well. Make them easier to distinguish by going up here and changing those two bullet points. Otherwise, they kind of all meld together. Now, don't go into many, many paragraphs about all the things you did. You can talk about those kinds of things in the interview if they come up. Have them ready to talk about in the interview as well when the interviewer asks you about other things that you performed at these companies. But if you put all that information in there, A, the person who goes through your resume is not going to want to read it, and B, it's going to make the resume go too long, which will not make you stand out as well. So just put in the highlights. Now, what if you don't have experience? I have a lot of students, and those students, when they graduate, a lot of them don't have any experience whatsoever. So here's what I tell them. Do you ever fix computers for your family? Do you fix them for your friends? Uh, have you ever helped out a, a friend who was in business who had a computer problem and you just went over, stepped in and helped them out, whether you got paid or not? If that's the case, then put in another job and just maybe even call it uh, your computer company. I ran my own computer company uh, from my garage. I was a consultant to several people, several small businesses, and you can even use some of those people people in those small businesses that were your friends as references for your resume. So there's nothing wrong with that. These are things that you actually did in your industry. There's, you're not being dishonest in any way. So make the last job that you put in just underneath experience your own personal consulting company. You can even give it a name as well. It doesn't matter. They're not going to be able to look it up and say otherwise, as long as your references for the people that you helped out will say good things about you. Make sure it's honest, however, because it's easy for people to see through a lot of dishonesty. And if you want to you know, say, hey, you ran this from your garage, it was mostly for friends, it, that's fine. Just make sure that you talk about the most complex, most complicated types of things that you helped fix for those people, because those are really good talking points in an interview. Now let's go down to education. What's in the education area is really important. However, it's not that important to make it all that fancy. You're only going to have an interviewer or an employer look at this section for a very short amount of time. They're going to want to know that you graduated, what you graduated in, were you a member of any clubs. If you had any certifications, you can add those under education as well. So you can see here I put in the names of the colleges, the dates, and a little bit of information about maybe the honors in my degree or maybe my class rank or GPA, something that helps you stand out a little bit, but you don't really need to go beyond that unless the interviewer asks you about it. If you start running low on space here, you can go ahead and highlight certain areas such as the education, make them a little bit smaller, move it up a little bit, because we really want to try to keep this to one page. It's not 100% crucial to do that, but it certainly does help as employers go through hundreds of resumes a day. For skills, I like to replace the text there and replace it with something else. And that is, you just delete that section if you're using a template, and you go up to Insert, and you choose a table. So hit the drop down on the table, maybe go four across, two down, something like that. It's going to be a very small table. So let's right click on this little square in the upper left corner, go to Table Properties, and click on Borders and Shading and just choose all. There we go. And now all the cells will show up. So here's where you can put in your skills, but you can just keep it to a few words or less. So I'll fill this in just as an example. So I put in Windows servers, Exchange Online, Cisco routers, put in some cloud services, Linux, various different things like that. So put in whatever skills you have, but again, don't try to describe them. Just put in the highlights. Firewalls, for instance. The interviewer may ask you what firewalls, but at least they know you have firewall experience. Now, if you have the room, you can put in more of these squares just by going to the very last table, hitting the tab key, and it adds a whole new row. But if you're running out of space to keep this all on one page, then I totally understand if you want to keep it down to just a couple of rows. Activities, 
this is one of those things that most employers are really not that interested in. However, some employers might be. And typically the difference is, is if you're going to work at a consultancy where they just basically consult for clients, they don't really care so much about your activities uh, at most places. However, if you're going to work as an IT administrator at a company that is not known for technology, they just need IT administrators, then they'll be interested more in your activities to see how well you fit fit in with the various team members. I'll just put in a very short amount of activities here, but you can put in what makes sense to you. So now we got to get this all on one page. I'm going to have to move some things around a little bit. I'll start by making the name at the top smaller and moving some things up. And now I have them all on one page. So now we have the name, the address, email, LinkedIn, if you want to put that in. We also have our aspirational goals, and we have the experience, education, skills, and activities. So what about references? Well, you can put in another line that says references available upon request. Now, if they say they need references on the resume, then you can go ahead and put them here at the bottom as well. And that part doesn't really have to be fancy. You don't need any more than three, and two is really going to be your minimum. So as an employer, this resume would really stand out. And that's because it gives all the information I need, gives it in a compact design, gives great talking points, great information on education and the skills that the person has, and also if interested activities as well as references. If you need additional good ideas, then at the top, you can go to review and go to Resume Assistant if you have the version of Word that has this option. Now, I realize that not all versions may have this option, but what it does is it goes into LinkedIn and it looks for the information. So based on the fact that I was looking for an information technology specialist, we see that it gave me a whole bunch of different resumes and what it is that they said in those resumes. Not the entire resumes, not the entire layout, just some information that some people put on their resumes. It also has some links to some very various articles on the types of things that you could put into your resume, but not everybody really knows how to fill out an IT resume, which is really the reason why I wanted to uh, create this video for you. So you knew exactly what employers are looking for, whether you're going to be a consultant or an administrator or a computer technologist at a company, uh, this is the type of resume that would definitely stand out for you.